In this episode of the Online Classroom, we're going to use House of Quality to understand the conceptual system design process in our systems approach to a straightforward problem, keeping a lawn neat. So the House of Quality uh, is one aspect of conceptual system design and it's the tool that we're going to learn in this course. It's also a tool to improve design quality. The House of Quality highlights relationships and trade-offs between the customer attributes and the technical considerations. And remember the customer attributes are really anything that you could define broadly as the customer requirements or the design requirements, something that's influenced by the customer and the technical considerations, uh, anything you might label as engineering characteristics or technical requirements. So we've already covered the areas in the house of quality that I've got here in green being the customer requirements. That's what we do in the pairwise analysis. The importance is the ranking that we end up with in the pairwise analysis. The engineering characteristics were covered in the TPM online classroom uh, and the metrics which are down the bottom, the TPMs, were also done in the TPM online classroom. The areas in blue are the trade-off and correlations and the relationships and these are the interrelationships between the what's and the how's, the customer requirements and the engineering characteristics. These are the two things that we're going to look at in this house of quality online classroom. We won't cover these aspects. Uh, this is because the design really hasn't evolved far enough, so it's a bit too early for us to have a comparison. In your groups, perhaps you might have already come up with a good design for your product, and you might be able to jump to the comparison sections and the benchmarking and target sections. But we'll cover this to some extent in the system evaluation topic. So this gives us our complete house of quality, but today we're just focusing on these blue sections. So I've taken the design requirements, which we translated into engineering considerations uh, in the TPM online classroom. Uh, you'll notice that each of the engineering characteristics has a direction. We want to, for example, increase the cutter coverage or reduce the movement noise level. Each of them also has an associated metric. So I'm just going to take the information that we've already come up with and put them into a house of quality framework. So on the left hand side here, I've put the design requirements. So it's just the four that we're looking at. Remember, we had a whole list of about 10 design requirements, which we then just took the top two. So a, a big house of quality can actually get quite large quite quickly. I've then put the engineering characteristics along the top here. So you'll see that what we're comparing is what the customer wants with what the engineering characteristics are. This is quite different to the pairwise analysis method that we used earlier. I've just put in the relative importance that I've come up with. Perhaps I have done a pairwise analysis separately because you'll notice that these aren't the same numbers that I've come up with in the previous pairwise online classroom. That's because we were looking at the broader customer requirements rather than the design requirements that I've got listed here. So I've decided that safe for users and passers-by is number one, effective cutting mechanism is number two, minimize noise level in operation is number three, and catches grass appropriately is number four. We then just also put in the metrics and all the TPMs. So here I've just labeled what the units are for each of these and you'll notice that I've got a Y star here and I've just explained that in the legend as yield strength. So the process of going through the house of quality and filling in the interrelationships is basically going through and deciding whether or not there is a relationship between the design requirement and the engineering consideration. I've decided there's a medium relationship between these two things and so I've given it a value of three. If you change something to do with the cutting mechanism, it's likely to change the cutting coverage. Likewise, I've gone through and highlighted the rest of these relationships. You'll see that the effectiveness of the cutting mechanism perhaps isn't as strongly correlated to the cutter speed, but it's very related to perhaps the cutter sharpness. The more effective that the cutter mechanism is, it's also going to have some sort of relationship on the noise level. You go through and do this for all of the requirements and you end up with uh, an idea of which of the engineering characteristics will affect the design requirements. You don't end up going through and summing any of these numbers. The idea is that this gives you a point at which you can start to compare and understand how these are connected, which you can then come back to later. 
it's worthwhile documenting how you came up with some of these decisions. So if I've given a 9 for something, why have you given that 9? Uh, and that is obviously done not in this table because this table is a quick reference, but you might do that in some of your documentation. You'll also notice that most of the requirements happen along the diagonal. So you can see from the cutter coverage up the top left down to the minimized noise levels in the bottom right, that there's a loose correlation between what has happened along that diagonal. This is because we've basically gone through and defined the engineering characteristics in that order. But you'll also notice that there are some things that have a really strong impact on the design requirements. So our engineering characteristic of user pushing effort actually features in all of these design requirements. We then next have a look at how the engineering characteristics trade off against each other. And this is done at the top of the house, uh, also called the roof. So we have the trade-offs and correlations. And if your design doesn't exist yet, it might be a bit difficult to understand whether or not these are correlations or trade-offs. So for example, this one that I've got here, increasing in cutter coverage and an increase in cutter speed might actually be a trade-off when I get to my design. Because if the design is using a traditional lawnmower blade, the more area it might be, the more difficult it might be to increase the speed. But because I'm not sure what the design is yet, I've just left this as a correlation and this might change in the future. You then go through and do this for all of the requirements and you end up with an idea of what might be a, a trade-off and what might be a correlation. Here I've got the trade-offs with a negative sign uh, and in that same numbering format where the weak relationships have a 1 and the strong relationships have a 9. So this completes our house of quality at this stage. As I said, we might get to the comparisons in the system evaluation and also the benchmarking and um, targets that we want to set for our design. So the key ideas from the house of quality are that the house of quality identifies relationships between the customer requirements and the technical characteristics of the design. And over a long time frame, iterations of the house of quality become a really valuable tracking tool. Hopefully, um, this gives you a really good idea of how the house of quality works. Make sure you do the reading for the topic, which is available on the website, and the self-test, which are available on model. See you next time.